Hey everyone, I'm Joey with Joey's Balloon Company and today I'm going to share with you how to make your very own standard balloon column at home using only balloons and fishing line. Also known as monofilament, is very difficult to see which makes it an ideal candidate for putting together this balloon column. If you want to work smarter not harder, pick up an electric balloon inflator from our website, link in the description below. That'll make your job a hundred times easier and save your lungs from blowing up a bunch of balloons. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video. It really helps our channel and it helps other people find this information as well. Our goal is to make high quality balloon decor in the simplest way possible. We're going to need four different colors of balloons and we're going to need exactly 12 of each of the colors. But give yourself a little bit of extra, maybe 15 of each color, just in case there's some holes in the balloons or they pop or anything like that. To get started, first we're going to need a weight to weigh down the bottom of this column. An easy way to make weights is through water balloons. First we're going to put one balloon inside another balloon to double balloon this to make it a little bit thicker so when we make our water balloon weight, it's less likely for it to pop. An easy way to do this is to take a pen or pencil, chopstick, straw, whatever you want, put it inside one balloon, and then stick this balloon inside your second balloon. Once you've got one balloon inside the other, stretch it out a little bit so that there's not any twists on the inside of your first balloon. Next, we're gonna put this over a faucet, fill it up till it's about the size of a softball, and then tie it off. Once you've filled up your balloon, make sure that you can see the inside color of your balloon. Mine is white. Stretch out the neck of your balloon and then tie it off. Now we've got our weight for the base of our column. Our next step is to just blow up all of the balloons. Let's do this Henry Ford style and create an assembly line so that we're not blowing up balloons, building, blowing up balloons, building, blowing up balloons, building. We're gonna blow all of them up at once and then build afterwards. So I'm gonna be using these colors, turquoise, pink, purple, and white. We want all of these to be as close to the exact same size as possible. There's balloon boxes and also other measuring tools to make your balloons exactly the same size, but we're not gonna be using those today. Eyeball it and do your best to make sure that all of your balloons are roughly the same size. In the grand scheme of things, when we build our column, it's not gonna matter if one is slightly larger or slightly smaller, but do your best to make sure they're the same size because it will help you out in the long run. The reason we avoid using a balloon box or other measuring tools is because it takes a lot longer to measure the balloons exactly, and we can provide high quality balloon decor using balloons that have been eyeballed as opposed to measuring them out exactly. So I'm all about making high quality balloon decor using the simplest methods possible. And this is what I have found in my 10 years of experience making balloon decor. Stuff like this will also happen with your balloons where they get stuck together and they get holes in them. So if you're making this at home, definitely pick up some extra balloons because this will happen and unfortunately, you just gotta deal with it and have some extra balloons on hand. Luckily, balloons are very cheap, so pick up some extra ones. Let's get out our handy dandy electric inflator because it makes our life a million times easier. Now that we've counted out all our balloons, it's gonna be pretty noisy for the next 10 to 15 minutes while we blow all of them up. We're using 12 inch balloons, so the maximum you wanna blow it up is about this much. If you start to see this upside down pear shape, you've blown it up too much. So let out a little bit of air so that you don't have this pear shape. It should look more elliptical than pear-shaped. This is the size we're gonna strive for for all of these balloons. So as I'm blowing up all of these other balloons, I'm gonna keep this one in front of me to compare the size so that all of my balloons that I blow up are as close as I can get to this exact size. Blow it up, compare, and let some air out if needed. This one actually, if you can see it, has a little hole right there. So just expect this when you start blowing up balloons, you are going to have to expect your balloons to have little holes in them or for them to pop and stuff like that. Expect it in the beginning so you're not frustrated with it later when it happens. So for this one, I'm just gonna have to throw out. A way to make this process go a little bit faster is to inflate two balloons at once and instead of making an individual knot in each balloon, you can tie these two balloons together to make a double. So I blow two up at once, try to make sure they're the exact same size, and instead of tying off each one individually, I can tie them together to make a double. This knot right here has gotta be a double knot. 
To make our balloon column, we're eventually going to be making quads, which are two doubles put together. So make sure if you end up making doubles, use the same two colors when you attach them together so that it's a lot easier for you later on. For me, I'm going to be blowing these up two at a time, and I'm going to be putting white and turquoise together and pink and purple together. This is important to do if you're going to create some sort of pattern with your column. If you don't plan on creating a pattern and it's going to be, going to be completely random, you don't necessarily have to line them up like this. But we're going to be making our column a spiral pattern, and it's very important to make sure that the colors are lined up correctly. So to save yourself some time, if you plan on doing a spiral pattern or a different type of pattern, just use the same two color balloons when attaching doubles together. Another good reason for making doubles as opposed to doing them individually, besides it being faster, is you can also just compare them as you're blowing them up to make sure that the two balloons that you're creating your double with are the exact same size. The way this electric pump works is there's two nozzles to inflate. If I push down on the blue nozzle, nothing happens. But when I push down on the yellow nozzle, that's when the air comes out both nozzles. So I put my first balloon on the nozzle that doesn't do anything if I push it down. And then my second balloon, I put on this nozzle. So when I push it down, it inflates both balloons at once. Also, the air is being sucked in on this side. So make sure you don't have anything covering up this air input or else nothing's going to be coming out of the nozzles. Contrary to popular belief, balloons are not very bad for the environment. They're made of latex, which a lot of plants produce naturally, and they take about four and a half years to biodegrade. Compare that to certain types of plastics, which sometimes take hundreds of years to break down. Great, so for our standard balloon column, we have all of our balloons blown up. If you decide to blow these up one at a time, that's totally fine. Just go ahead and make doubles with them using the same two colors for each double. I'm done with my electric pump now, so I'm just gonna unplug it and get it out of the way. If any balloons pop from here on out, I'm just gonna blow them up with my mouth. So basically, I just use this balloon pump for blowing up all of my balloons in the very beginning. Great, so the next step that we have, we should have two different colors of doubles. I have pink and purple, and I have white and turquoise. So now, all we need to do is put these two together. All I'm going to do is put these nozzles close to each other and then twist around the top balloons. Chances are, once you've twisted your top balloons around two or three times, you should have something that just looks like a clump like this. This is called a quad. I'm going to align my quad so that all of the balloons are flat, like this, and we're going to end up stacking the quads on top of each other to create a spiral pattern. But they don't have to look like this for now. Just put them into quads. This is our next step in our assembly line. So get all your doubles and put them into quads. If you are doing more than one balloon column, I highly recommend just doing everything assembly line style as opposed to going through this process once and then going through it again to make your second one. Just blow all of them up at once, make doubles out of all of them once, make quads with your balloons all at once, and then finish by building. It'll save you some time by batching similar tasks as opposed to just repeating them one after the other. In order to start our build, we're gonna need a sturdy base, so we are going to take our water balloon weight. By the way, these are very durable, so if you drop them, generally they they won't pop. Even on concrete or grass, you can test out these double ballooned water balloons for yourself, but these are very good weights for our balloon columns, whether these balloons are going on concrete outside, grass outside, or indoors. If the columns are going to go outside, we have to take into account the wind, which could pick up at any time. So if this is going outside, we are going to need a column or a pole, something that we can attach our balloon column to so that when the wind goes, it doesn't look like one of those crazy guys outside of a car dealership. There's a time and a place for those guys. This is not one of those times or places. We're just making a balloon column and we want it to be sturdy. So if they're going outside, make sure that there's some posts or something that you can attach this balloon column to. So we've got our fishing line and we've got our weight. Where we want to tie this knot is in between the nozzle and in between the knot because any friction right here could rub the balloon and rupture it. And it doesn't matter if there's a rupture between this knot and the nozzle, but if we put it here and it starts rubbing and ruptures, that's gonna let the water out of this balloon. So make sure when you tie it, tie your fishing line between this knot and the nozzle. So you're gonna wanna double knot this or fisherman's knot it, which is basically just twisting these two together. And then after about four or five twists, sticking the end back through the original hole right here and pulling it tight. I know this knot has another name, but I just call it a fisherman's knot because I don't know the other name. 
So how this is going to work is we are going to put our water balloon on the bottom and we're going to continue holding the fishing line that's attached to it. We're going to take a quad, flatten out the balloons like this, and I'm going to make sure for with every single quad that I lay down, pink is directly across from purple and white is directly across from turquoise. Taking into account the orientation of where the different color balloons are is very important if you're going to put a spiral or another type of design in your column. So for the first one, hang on to your string with your weight on the bottom. Go ahead and slide your first quad on. I'm pulling up the fishing line so that I can get the weight as close to the center of these balloons as possible. Next, I'm going to take this fishing line and wrap it around two adjacent balloons like this purple and this turquoise. So I'm going to bring the fishing line on one side of the purple go under the purple, under the turquoise, and lift it back up. So I just wrapped it around the underside under these two balloons using this crease right here. Now I'm going to use this crease right here. So I'm going to go in between the pink and white, bring it under. Remember, I'm gonna pass under two balloons, so white, purple, and then bring it up on this side of the crease. So with every single quad that you attach, you're going to want to make sure that you wrap it around two balloons on one crease going forward to backward and then the other crease going left to right. This is held pretty tight right here, but if I need to get up and go get something, I can always bring my line in between two balloons so that their pressure together will hold this line and not let it stretch out. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna grab another quad. So here's my next quad. I am going to flatten it out and make sure that purple is across from pink and white is across from turquoise. Now I'm gonna take a bird's eye view and look directly down at the column and try to match up these colors. So it looks like they're not gonna match up right now because my purple's lined up, but my white has a turquoise on top. So that means I just need to flip my quad upside down and it will be lined up. There we go. This is not how you're going to attach it. You're actually going to turn it about 45 degrees so that each balloon sits in the crease of the balloons below it, like this. You can see with my purple and white balloons, that it's already starting to spiral. So when I attach the second quad, I'm gonna to wanna to put pressure on the nozzles where all of them are connected, and then do the same wraparound method using my monofilament or fishing line, but it's gonna look a little bit different because I need to attach this quad to the quad directly below it. So what I'm gonna do is pull this monofilament directly up the middle here, and it's not attached yet, but I am still putting pressure in the middle of this quad. And now I'm gonna wrap it around both whites and both purples. So I'm gonna go around on this side, make sure that I go on the other side of this white, Bring it underneath, make sure that I go to the other side of the purple, and pull it up on the other side of this purple here. Next, this is pretty cool, I can just lift this up, twist it around, and I can do the same thing for my turquoise and pink. So wrap it around the other side, make sure I get the other side of this turquoise. Bring it under, make sure I go to the other side of the pink, and pull it up but just make sure that when you're adding a quad to your column, with your fishing line, you're only gonna to wanna to attach this new quad to the quad that's right below it. You're not gonna to need to go all the way down to the very bottom of the column. You're just gonna to need to attach this new quad to the quad directly below it. So with that in mind, let's put on another quad. I'm gonna flatten it out and make sure that pink and purple are across from each other. There we go. Now I need to line it up. Nice, this is what you're looking for. So again, you're gonna to wanna to turn this quad about 45 degrees so that it fits in the creases of the quad below it, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure to continue this spiral pattern. I wouldn't wanna turn this 45 degrees in the other direction because as you can see, that's not a spiral. I could make a zigzag pattern like that if I wanted to, but I'm going for a spiral pattern, so I'm gonna continue in the same direction as my other two. I've got my monofilament, and so now I'm just going to slide this quad in into the correct space. So I'm gonna bring the fishing line over around the purple, under this purple one right here, bring the fishing line under this turquoise one right here, and up on the other side of this top turquoise one. And remember, as I'm doing this, I'm using my other hand to push down on the center of this quad where all of the balloons are connected, 
just to make sure that the column is very tightly put together because again, we don't want that waving crazy man look once we build this, we want it to be pretty sturdy. So I'm pushing it down as, as I'm wrapping this around. Remember when we're attaching it, we need to attach it using both creases. So I just used this crease right here to wrap around the purple and turquoise. So now I need to use this crease right here. So now I'm going to turn my column. I'm gonna wrap it around this white and this white, then come under this purple and come on the other side of this purple. Great, so we've got three quads right here and the monofilament coming up. Let's grab another quad. Flatten it out, purple and pink cross from each other and make sure that it's being put on the correct way. All right, so with one of my... So one just popped, don't worry about it. We're gonna fix this at the end. The fastest way to get done with this is assembly line style. So we're gonna do all the things of the same nature at the same time. Then we can go back at the end and fix them. So I'll show you how to fix this at the end of the video. Now I'm gonna turn my column 90 degrees. My column is currently sitting on a little footstool. I'm gonna take it off and put it on the ground so that it's a little bit easier for me to get to. Eventually, I'm gonna use this step stool in order to get to the higher parts of the column. I'm only gonna build it to about six and a half feet, which is right above my head, because then generally we'll put a topper on it, which is a Mylar balloon or a much larger latex balloon. We'll put us right at eight feet, which is generally enough to fit inside or on the sides of doorways. But if you have a low ceiling, you can make the height of this as tall or as short as you want. Totally up to you and dependent on how much space you have to work with. Also, another tip, since I use my right hand for the most part to wrap around this monofilament, I keep the spool of monofilament on my right side so that it doesn't get tangled behind me or in front of me or on my left side. It's just a lot easier if I just keep the spool on the same side of the hand that I'm using to wrap it around. Now that I've got this column up to about six and a half feet, I'm standing on a step stool. I'm not actually this tall. I'm gonna cut my monofilament so that I have about three feet of length from the top. This is just gonna give me enough room to tie this off. So I have this column tilted down. This is a bird's eye view from the very top of the column. I'm going to hold my monofilament and I'm going to wrap it around two balloons, just the top quad. So I wrapped it around two balloons. I'm going to stick this piece through this hole that I made and pull it tight. I'm going to do that two times just to make sure this stays. Now I'm going to take my scissors and cut this off as close to the base as I can, leaving about an inch or so of monofilament so that it doesn't come unraveled. And there we go. Now, if you remember, I popped a turquoise balloon earlier in the build. First, I need to find where that turquoise balloon popped. So I am going to look around at this turquoise spiral and I'm going to see where there's a break in the spiral. Doesn't look like over here. Let's see. Keep following it around. And it looks like it's on the very, very bottom right here. So now that we've found it, we can take a look inside and see if we can see the punctured balloon. And the answer is yes. You see that turquoise in there? I'm going to end up attaching another turquoise to this ruptured part of the turquoise. So first things first, I need to blow up another turquoise balloon. Now I'm going to make sure that I have plenty of neck on this balloon to tie to the ruptured part of this other balloon in here. I'm going to double knot this nozzle to this nozzle in here, just like we made a double earlier on. And voila, 
we have our replacement turquoise balloon. This takes a lot of practice, so don't be discouraged if it's difficult for you to tie the latex because it's stretchy. It's very difficult at first. Just practice a little bit and you'll be just fine. Don't worry, it kind of looks like a mess right now, but once we add the topper and we set it up straight and kind of get this spiral exactly how we want it, it's gonna look fantastic, I'm telling you. Nothing you've ever seen is this fantastic. All right, so I have a couple different toppers on hand that we can use. I have an elephant and a pink pig. Take your vote. If you want the elephant, like this video. If you want the pig, subscribe to our channel. For those of you who have already liked this video as you're watching it, I'm going to pick the elephant. Thank you so much for liking and definitely subscribe to our channel for some more balloon tutorials. We need our electric balloon pump again because we need something tinier to fit inside of this balloon. And I'll show you in just a second. These balloon pumps come with little adapters that we can twist onto our main inflator nozzle. So if you can see here on the Mylar balloon, it has a little orange piece um, and we need to stick the inflator under this orange piece. So when we get this inflator plugged in, it's going to look something like this where the orange part of this flap is on the outside or else it's not gonna inflate. These are also self-sealing, so you don't have to worry about tying them off or anything. Just inflate until they're full, not over full, and then you're good. I have to admit this elephant head is a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm actually gonna try the pig and see if it is a little bit bigger and will look a little bit better on our column. All right, so here's the pig, here's the elephant. I don't know why the pig is a lot bigger than the elephant, but we're gonna go ahead and use the pig because I think it'll look better on this column. If I was using smaller balloons for the column, maybe like five inch balloons or nine inch balloons, that might look okay. This is probably still even gonna look small on the top of this column. Let's just put it on and see what we think. I'm gonna use this three foot piece of monofilament that I cut off from when I tied the top of my balloon column and I'm just going to double knot it. So I'm gonna to try to tie my knot right in here, which is between the tip and the nozzle. And again, I'm going to do a fisherman's knot just because I think it's easy and I don't know what else to call it and I'm not even a fisherman. So that's why I use it. So as you can tell, it's still kind of small compared to the column. These are just the only ones I had on hand for this tutorial. But for actual events, you might want to pick something that's a little bit bigger. I think these are only like 18 inches, but for a normal size topper, we usually use 36 inch to 42 inch uh, size toppers. I'm gonna wrap my monofilament around two balloons on the top quad, so around my turquoise and around this pink and I'm going to start pulling and that is going to pull the topper down into the column. Once I put pressure on this, I can wrap it around a few more times using the same two balloons. Then we're gonna do the same technique that I used where I hold the monofilament up here, wrap it around and put the monofilament through the loop that I created by holding it up there and pulling it tight. So in order to straighten our column so that it's straight up and down, we're gonna start with this bottom quad and work our way up quad to quad to quad and fix it whichever way that it's leaning. So if we started off with a column that's completely leaning all the way over to the side, we're going to wanna to start on this bottom quad and start, start pushing the quads above it towards this side so that it starts straightening out. And just work your way up the column and make it as straight as possible. And there you have it, that is our balloon column. Thanks for watching everyone. Best wishes with building your first balloon column. Check out our website for balloon decor supplies as well as job opportunities as balloon decorators in the United States and Canada. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for some more balloon decor tutorials and share this video with your creative friends. I'm Joey with Joey's Balloon Company. I'll see you next time. Take care everyone.